nerve cells and attaches to special receptor sites. This produces a new electrical charge and the message is relayed along the chain. When nicotine reaches the brain, it mimics and overwhelms acetylcholine. Nicotine overstimulates the brain in a number of different areas. It can relax some muscles and activate other muscle systems. It releases hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline that can affect the way you feel. It can arouse you if you're sleepy. If you're nervous and anxious, the right amount of nicotine can help make you feel a little bit better and a little bit more relaxed. Eventually, the brain adapts to the elevated level of activity. Any shortage of nicotine creates the discomfort and craving of addiction. Once you're addicted to the nicotine and you go on to smoke for decades and put all those other poisonous compounds into your body, that's what shortens your life, not the nicotine, but the repeated exposure to the other harmful compounds in smoke. Johnny Williams found out that tobacco in the field has few toxins, but by the time of sale, it contains a deadly group of carcinogens called tobacco-specific nitrosamines, or TSNAs. Something was happening to the tobacco while it was drying during the week-long curing process that follows harvest. By the 1980s, most Virginia tobacco was cured by sealing it in a prefabricated barn, where it was heated with the exhaust from a propane gas fire. Some scientists believe that this oxygen-starved or anaerobic atmosphere causes bacteria in the tobacco to seek oxygen from other sources. Tobacco is rich in nitrate compounds, which carry three oxygen atoms. When the bacteria takes one, it creates a new highly reactive nitrite compound that is drawn to tobacco's nicotine molecule. The fruit of this marriage? deadly nitrosamines, which can damage human DNA. Williams thought he might prevent the nitrosamines from forming if he could somehow impede the bacteria in the tobacco. And I thought, I'll put it in the microwave and see what happens if I try to cure this tobacco in the microwave. At the end of two minutes, something very serious happened. So I pulled the tobacco out, and I had cured tobacco in two minutes. Tests carried out at the University of Kentucky found the microwave-cured tobacco to be significantly lower in nitrosamines than tobacco cured in a barn. Eager to produce a commercial batch, Williams needed a way to expand production. Well, I had someone in my office go over to Walmart and uh, purchase a hundred of these uh, kitchen microwaves. Then, looking to the future, he commissioned a custom-built oven that filled a room. After curing in the giant microwave began, he received devastating news. The machine was in flames. And I came in this room, and I sat down, and I said to myself, now what are, what are the other things that I can do? He had already tested a variety of other curing techniques, and found the forced hot air of a convection oven to be slow but effective. Now, he needed a larger test. So the only thing I could come up with, with convection air, was a tumble dryer. 
Well, I came back that next morning, took the tobacco out, overnighted it to the University of Kentucky. And not only were the nitrosamines low, but the tobacco quality was improved, the texture. Williams conceived a grand plan to change the way Virginia tobacco was cured. He built high-tech curing barns that worked much like giant convection ovens, forcing clean, heated air through the tobacco. He gave the barns to farmers who agreed to sell him their cured tobacco. The first Star Cure harvest was ready in 1998. But there were no takers. You know, I thought the entire industry would seize upon this. Uh, I'm hopeful like any entrepreneur would be is, uh, I figured out how to do this. It works. This fixes a problem for you. Only no one was there, and I didn't understand it. One company did come forward. In April of 1999, Brown and Williamson, makers of Lucky Strikes and Cools, offered to buy 1.2 million pounds of Star's low nitrosamine tobacco. But the good news was only good for a day. As soon as Brown and Williamson announced, within 24 hours, another company made a public statement that they had just discovered how to do this in their laboratory. The giant R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company said that nitrosamines were not the result of an anaerobic environment, but rather were formed from compounds in the propane gas exhaust used to heat the barns. Either or both explanations could be correct, and both called for similar solutions. Reynolds' less costly approach was to retrofit existing gas-fired barns with clean-burning heat exchangers. Soon, RJR was joined by Philip Morris, the industry leader. I think Reynolds did make it go very quickly across the entire industry, um, as opposed to Star, which I think was looking for a competitive advantage. Uh, we didn't see a competitive advantage, um, and we thought it was the right thing to do. We decided to implement it, and we wanted, in fact, it implemented across the whole industry. Whether the STAR patent was violated is yet to be legally determined. Late in 2000, STAR, now STAR Scientific, introduced its own cigarette called Advance, the first to be made with low nitrosamine Virginia tobacco. The company also had a new chief operating officer, Paul Perito, a Harvard-trained lawyer and Washington insider. Neither we nor anybody else can manufacture a safe cigarette. We do believe that we can manufacture a cigarette that does deliver less toxins, and we are hopeful that this will someday be shown through scientific research. It will take years because the onset of cancer takes years. Star Tobacco it's an intriguing company. <laughs> I think, if anything, it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a needle in the side of the big guys, making them do things they wouldn't normally do unless you had Star out there. And, and what it does, it provides a healthy dose of competition for safer products. Whether or not they're really safer, I think, is the big $64,000 question. Keep in mind, we have 42 other carcinogens in cigarette smoke. The reason cigarettes have so many toxins is that they burn. Any organic material like tobacco is chemically complex. Combustion increases the complexity enormously. With heat peaking at 1,000 degrees centigrade, the 300 or so compounds that make up tobacco explode into over 5,000. 
Tobacco behind the burning cone heats up